Okay, hello all you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite, and welcome back to making 3D games in Game Maker. So this time, I'm finally going to go and dive right into how you would do 3D collisions in Game Maker right now. Uh, that, has not been that has not been implemented. I can walk through this clock tower if I wanted to, and it looks very funny. Uh, so I'm going to close out of that, and I'm going to start working with code. First, before I start, there are a couple different collision systems that you can use in Game Maker. There's a couple different uh, DLL extensions that people have made. I'm going to be talking about two of them over the next couple of videos. Uh, the first one that I'm going to be doing in this video is going to be P3DC, which is probably the more common one. If you Google 3D collisions in Game Maker, this is probably what's going to come up. It works, although there are a few things I don't like about it. But since it's the easiest to use, I'll be starting with that. Now, before I start, I have lamented in the past about how I'm using really quick and dirty code for moving around. When you hit the keys, you basically just jump to a new position. There's no X speed or Y speed or anything like that. And I'm going to real quick uh, just fix that. So I'm going to initialize x speed and y speed. Wow. It did not take me long to start misspelling things in this video either. I'm going to initialize x speed and y speed in the camera's create event. And I'm going to set them to zero right before this giant switch statement. And now instead of saying x minus equals the sine of the direction and y minus equals the cosine of the direction, I'm going to change this over to say x speed equals the negative sine of the direction, and y speed equals the negative cosine of the direction, and I'm going to do this to all four of these cases here. Technically all eight. Alright, so now all of these directions, w, a, s, d, left, right, up, and down, instead of directly accessing the x and y coordinates, um, they are now accessing the x speed and y speed. And at the end, I can say x plus equals x speed, and y plus equals y speed. And the reason that I'm doing this will become clear by the end of the video. I should have done it from the start of the series back like almost a year ago now, but I didn't, so I'm gonna have to fix it now. And so now when I open up the game again, it works exactly the same way as it was working before. Um, left, I mean right, left, up, down, W, A, S, D, whichever you prefer. Sorry if my voice sounds even funnier than usual today. I feel like I'm getting allergies even though it's only the end of January and it's definitely not allergy season yet. Alright, so the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to uh, go over to this Game Maker Community Forum thread. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. Uh, it's quite simply titled Precise 3D Collisions, written by this guy called Brit14. And this is a thread containing a download link and uh, previous versions of the 3D collision system. Uh, you can go and hit download newest versions and that is going to open up a Mediafire page uh, to p3dc.rar once the page loads. Alright, so the page hasn't loaded, but you should be able to hit the download button, and it's going to actually download the file onto your computer. Alright, so p3dc uh, underscore version 6.1 has been downloaded. I can close out of this because it's going to severely lag my computer and probably screw up the recording. Alright, once that downloads onto your computer, you can open it up. Um, there's a couple different programs you can use to extract it. You can use 7-zip like I am, or you can use, uh, I believe, WinZip is another popular one. If you open it up, you'll find a few files. There's the source code, there's the Game Maker Studio examples, there's the Game Maker 8.0 examples, there's the Dill and the Scripts. Inside the Dill and the Scripts in particular is what you're interested in. Um, there's a file called p3dc scripts.gml, and there's a file called p3dc.dll, which would happen to be the actual code library that you are interested in using. Anyway, you can extract this, uh, this archive to wherever you want to on your computer. You can save it to your, uh, your downloads folder, or you can save it to your desktop or your My Documents or wherever you happen to want. And once you go back to Game Maker Studio, I should mention that this is going to work in Game Maker 8.0 or 8.1. And assuming they have fixed an issue with DLLs in Game Maker Studio 2 by the time I publish this video, it should be working in there as well. Anyway, find p3dc.dll on your computer. If I can actually find out where mine is, that'll be great. I think it's in here. Not the source code. Alright, DLL and scripts, that's what I want. Uh, I'm going to import this as an included file. I should mention, sometimes, this is a general problem with GameMaker. I don't know if they have fixed this issue in more recent versions or not. But sometimes when you import a file, it doesn't actually get imported, even though it's showing in the list. So you should always go, uh, right-click, and hit Open in Explorer and open up the data files folder and see if the uh, the file that you imported is actually there. In my case it is. Uh, sometimes it wouldn't actually import this file and when you try to access it, GameMaker will just throw an error at you. Anyway, the second thing that you're going to want to do after you've imported the DLL 
is go to uh, create script. No, not. I hit the wrong button. Get rid of that. Take two. The second thing that you're going to want to do is to add existing script. And GameMaker should open up a window, and it should search for uh, GML files. And in the download that you downloaded from uh, the forum thread, there should be p3dc underscore scripts.gml. And if you uh, click on that, import this tab scripts, no thank you. You can if you want to. I just think it's easier to see if you don't import it as a tab script. But GameMaker is going to import a whole list of scripts, which I'll go over once it finishes doing so. Okay, so once this is done, you're going to see a whole list of scripts that are imported from that GML file. And the first one that you're going to care about is going to be, let's go over to close out of the camera's uh, create event for now. Let's go over to the world where everything is initialized. And after here, I'm going to uh, create a little divider with a comment. You're going to call it p3dc init. And all this does is it's one of these scripts that you imported. And if you uh, were to middle click it, you can open it up and see that it simply links a bunch of uh, functions in the DLL library. That's redundant. It links a bunch of functions in the library and uh, assigns them to a bunch of global variables, uh, p3dc slash abbreviations. You don't really need to worry about this. It's good, but it's not quite necessary for you to go into the, uh, the game end event, which you can find in uh, choose event other game end. It's good if you do p3dc free at the end of the game, but this isn't necessary. In, in old versions of Game Maker, when you ended the game, uh, the computer might not necessarily have uh, freed the memory associated with the extensions. Game Maker Studio handles that automatically, so you don't have to worry about it, but it's still good practice to free the DLL once you're done using it. Anyway, the basic principle of the precise 3D collision library is that you can create collision models and check them against each other for to see if they're intersecting. Uh, the collision models aren't too unlike uh, the visual 3D models that are created with D3D model create and D3D model load, but the way you create them does look slightly different. So I'm going to say collision player firstly equals p3dc begin model, and I'm going to end this off with p3dc end model. Uh, you'll notice that this doesn't actually create anything with triangles in it. It's just uh, you're initializing it and finalizing it with p3dc end model, and everything that you do to create the model has to be done in the middle. Even though the player isn't visible on the screen, I'm still going to assign a model to it, and that's going to take the shape of a rectangle. So I can say p3dc add block. And again, this isn't too unlike drawing a block on the screen in Game Maker. Uh, you have an X start, a Y start, and a Z start, and an X end, a Y end, and a Z end. So I'm going to make the player, how about, 16 by 16. So it'll start at negative 8, negative 8, 0, and it will go to, how about, positive 8, positive 8, and let's make you 32 pixels tall, because I think that's how far off the ground the camera is. That can be the top of your head, so to say. Anyway, that's the player model, and now I'm going to make a collision model for the map. So I'm going to say collision collision map, and that's also going to be equal to p3dc begin model, and I'm going to end it off with p3dc end model. And right now, I'm not going to worry about the clock tower for the time being, but I'm just going to say p3dc add floor. And again, just like the code to create a visual floor in 3D in Game Maker, what was it, d3d draw floor or something like that? I am going to pass a, a start and an end point, which is going to be 0, 0, 0, and I believe room width, room height, and 0. And I have now set up the collision model for my player, and I have set up the collision model for the map. That is the telephone. Alright, that phone call was actually important, but never mind. So, in the camera step event, because this is where the movement happens, I'm not going to check collision horizontal and vertical quite yet. First, I'm just going to check collision with the floor. And first, I'm just going to comment out this, uh, this check to see if you're on the floor, if you're at z equals 0. And you're going to fall through, because uh, nothing tells you to stop moving once you hit the floor. And, this, and as a result, when I run the game, 
as I showed in the gravity video, you're going to fall through the floor because there's nothing stopping you now. But this is where the 3D collisions come into effect. So I'm going to come up here and wrap this z plus equals z speed in an if statement. And the, uh, the condition in this if statement is going to be if p3dc check of world.collision player x, y, z plus z speed. And I'll explain these arguments in a minute. World.collision map 0, 0, 0. And if all this is equal to false, I suppose I could use an exclamation point um, negation operator instead, but I try to make my code readable for tutorials. Anyway, if this condition is true, if the uh, player's collision model is not colliding with the world's collision model, uh, then you can go on ahead and drop downwards. Else, we're just going to go and set z speed equal to zero. And now when I run the game, instead of falling through the floor, and the game has crashed because I misspelled z speed. I knew that was going to happen eventually. Um, I believe instead of zp seed, it's z s p e e d. All right, let's try that again. All right, so the game is loaded. I can move around. Uh, I'm no longer falling through the floor when I jump. I send into the air and stop when I hit the ground. Um, I, I will still walk through this uh, this clock tower model, however, because there isn't anything stopping me from doing that. And I'm going to. Uh, I think it's high time to add that in. So, all right, real quick, before I do anything else, I'm going to assign z equal to zero uh, when z speed equals zero when you land on the floor. This is just to make sure that you snap cleanly to the floor when you land on it, and so that you don't hover a couple pixels over it. There are better ways to snap cleanly to the surface that you land on when you use 3D collision systems, especially if the floor isn't strictly going to be set to zero, if you could be landing on a table or something like that. But I'm going to cover that in another video. Now, these arguments that this takes, I said I was going to get to them later. Quite simply, if you uh, were to open up the script, which is another one of the imported scripts, uh, p3dc check takes eight arguments. Um, there is model one, the ID, which is the model that was created, which is collision player or collision map. Uh, there is the X, the Y, and the Z that is being checked at, which is, in my case, the player's X, Y, and and the same thing for model 2, which is, in this case, a collision map and 0, 0, 0, because the world starts at 0, 0, 0. If you wanted to, for whatever reason, move the uh, collision map of the world to negative x, negative y, negative z minus z speed instead, and check the player at 0, 0, 0, you could do that, but I don't really think there's any reason to do that. So in that regard, it's very similar to using one of the 2D collision functions that are built into GameMaker, like a place meeting or a collision pointer or something of that nature. Anyway, since this clock tower is not accounted for, I'm not going to do that, so let's close out of the camera step event, go back into the world's create event, and in addition to adding the floor to the world's collision map, collision model, I'm going to say p3dc add model. And this is going to be very similar to the, uh, the d3d model load function. It's going to take the name of the file to load, clocktower.gmod, and it's going to take the coordinates to add it to the model at. So in my case, since the clock tower is being drawn at 500, 500, 0, I'm going to place, that is what it's being drawn at, right? I'm going to actually check that because I'm not sure now that I said that. It is, all right, yes, it is being translated to 500, 500, 0. Okay, so anyway, that's where the clock tower is being drawn. So that is where the clock tower is going to be added to the, uh, the collision map. So now once I go back into the camera step event, I'm going to copy this and use very similar code for each of the x plus equals y speed, x, y, x plus equals y speed, x plus equals x speed, y plus equals y speed, except instead of using z speed as the destination, I'm going to do x, x speed, or is the x on my keyboard, thank you, and y speed. And that's all you need to do. Now, there's one caveat to this. When you run the game, did I really do it again? All right, so when you run the game, I can jump, but I cannot move. And that is something that I should have talked about a minute ago, but it did not. I suppose that's another caveat that I should have thought of. 
Since the player's model is pressed up against the floor, the bottom face of the collision model is coplanar with the floor. That's a big word that you don't get to say every day. A collision will always be detected there anyway, even if logically you should be able to slide across it. So to get around that, you can simply check uh, one pixel unit above the player Z, Z plus one. Instead of just checking the player Z coordinate, check Z plus one. All right, there we go. Now you can move around, uh, you can jump. You're not getting stuck on the floor, which imagine that getting stuck on the floor. Now, when you walk up to the clock tower, you may still walk through it. And that is because the clock tower model was created with this little program down here in my taskbar, model creator for game maker. All right, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, clicking on model creator down there caused game maker to crash. That was fun. Anyway, some people will tell you that P3DC does not work with models created in model creator for game maker. Uh, this is not entirely true. If you have a model uh, that you created in model creator and you're trying to load it into P3DC and it's not being added to the collision world, the reason for this is that model creator for game maker actually uh, stores a little bit of extra data inside each of the model files. Uh, this is just so that you can open it up and it'll be using the correct texture and so that the grid will be where you left it and that kind of thing. If you were to open this uh, clocktower.gmod up in Notepad, or in my case Notepad++, or whatever other text editor you want to use, if it opens, all right, thank you. Uh, the second line down, right next to where the number, indicating the number of lines in the file, uh, there is a space and GMMC and a couple other numbers. Uh, you can simply delete that, save the file, and go about your business. So now when I close this, close notepad, thank you very much, and when I run the game, and when I turn to face the clock tower and run up to it, I will now, instead of walking through it, I'll slide along the edge. And this is using entirely precise 3D collisions for Game Maker. It is not using any of the built-in 2D collision functions. Um, if I were to go and, whoa, turned awfully fast there. But if I were to go and strafe off the side of the world, I would start falling and never come back, so I can close the game now. And that's it. There are a few more things that you can do with precise 3D collisions in Game Maker. Uh, you can rotate models, for example. You can't scale them up, although I feel like you should be able to. You can rotate them. There are ways to optimize them so that they're a little bit faster. You can do ray casting, which is like my favorite thing ever to do in 3D collisions. But I'll cover all of those in separate videos. Uh, for now, if you want to download this project file, it shall be available via a link in the description. What are you doing, Game Maker? My name is Dragonite. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later.